He's Norway's former defense and foreign minister. He was ambassador to the United Nations, a prominent member of the Global Commission on Drug Policy. The war on drugs was a failure, that's what he says. And, he, um, and as such, he was last year's winner of the Cannabis Culture Award. He said a very beautiful sentence I use a lot the last year. He said, hope is almost as important as life itself. If we give up hope, we shall never reach our goals. Mr. Stoltenberg, I'm very proud to invite you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I'm not always invited back to the places I've been to, so <laughs> I highly appreciate the invitation. And I immediately accepted the invitation because um, I felt very much at home here last year. And uh, I like to be at home. So the moment I was invited to come here, I was looking forward to have this atmosphere and this, uh, this uh, environment, which is so important for those of us who have the chance to come close to you. And I felt so uh, last year and this year, I feel as a part of this uh, group and this environment. And I highly appreciate uh, that fact. Uh, uh, I'm very fond of my own country, and I'm very fond of the spirit and thinking in my own country. But. Uh, we have weaknesses. You, you probably have never heard a Norwegian accept that we have some weaknesses. But we have. Uh, this um, award winner this year uh, who has a pro program called Spruten and Slicken. That would have been absolutely impossible in Norway if, if one come up with such a, a program and with that title there would immediately have been so strong reactions that I think the Broadcasting Corporation would have given up this. Uh, and I, I like those, this provocative titles. Uh, I think um, uh, we go forward through provocation. I, 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 I have tried my whole life not to be provocative, but it's difficult because, um, yes, because the older you get, the more you see how long time progress means. And I'm, uh, I, I'm not inclined to wait too long for new goals and new achievements. Uh, that's why I more and more appreciate provocative statements and programs. I, I like to say a few words, take this opportunity to say a few words on the um, uh, commission, global commission on uh, uh, drugs. Uh, I was uh, uh, I, I, I was not pioneers in this respect. I was invited to join the commission when I uh, chaired a commission in Norway on the new, a new drug policy in Norway, which so far have not been successful. Let me be modest and tell you the fact. But, uh, but I, I still hope that we shall have a new policy because I don't think it's enough just to be content with the present policy, as long as 300 people every year die of overdoses for our country with 5 million people, that is unacceptable. And I think it will lead to reactions and then 
a new pol policy, not a new policy, but a modernizing of the policy we have to, uh, today. In this commission, I have met a combination of expertise, which is always necessary, but also of um, experience. And this is a, a experience in expertise in drugs, um, uh, experience in global affairs and international affairs. That's why you will find on the commission a surprisingly amount of former foreign ministers. But I see now, after having joined the commission myself, the importance of having been foreign minister. I always have good to find reasons why I should, uh, why, why I should join uh, a group or a commission. Uh, and and, and I, I certainly appreciate this experience as a part of the commission. Over the past two years, since we started this Global Commission on Drug Policy and launched the report on war uh, on drugs, a lot has happened. Especially since we last got together here in Amsterdam last year for the Cannabis Culture Award 2012, the tide seems to be changing on the war on drugs. I hope I'm right here. I'm not confident, but I, I have seen, uh, not at least in the United States, a change of attitude, which is absolutely necessary for a new policy on drugs. In Latin America, the taboo that prevented debate has been broken and policy alternatives ranging from decriminalization to legalization have been put on the table for the first time ever. Substantive discourse and policy change have occurred or are imminent in countries such as Colombia, Guatemala, and Uruguay. And these important regional leaders have been vocal at the UN level too. Mexico, one of the countries most affected by violence linked to drug prohibition, is also considering alternatives to prioritize citizen security. These policy shifts are likely to be instrumental in moving forward the process of change in the United States, where we have seen great progress recently with regards to cannabis policies. Now, 19, 19 US states allow medical marijuana use and Washington and Colorado broke ground uh, newly by regulating a recreational use and setting a concrete challenge to the Obama, Obama administration. Public opinion is steadily shifting and now more than 52% of US citizens, uh, according to polls, support cannabis regulation at the national level and uh, according to these latest polls, it's a sensational outcome. And we will see if this will also be a part of the reality in the months and years to come. In some parts of Europe, more explicitly in the UK, Spain, and Eastern Europe. The debate on drug policy seems to have been re-energized with new reports and local legislation coming out. Besides the increase on the perception 
on the links between drug prohibition and the HIV pandemic and other diseases. A major review of the global drug control regime is scheduled to take place in a UN General Assembly special, special session in 2016. Uh, in what will likely be a key moment to turn the debate into concrete action at the global level. As we move towards 2016, the continued work of commissions, NGOs, researchers, and cult cultural entities to educate national, regional, and local government and stakeholders need to be strengthened to create a favorable public environment to end the war and set up a positive agenda on drug policy. Then I, I started this by saying I feel very much at home here. And um, at home I always say whatever I mean and not what I'm expected to say and expected to mean. And I like, I, I like, uh, to share with you, I, I don't ask for an answer now, but uh, one thing made a deep impression on me on the commission report we gave in Norway. Uh, we ha had a very good report, I believe, but we did not manage to come up with good suggestion for preventive action. Um, uh, and I, I wondered why. I, I, I think one reason was that we all believed, and this is logic and politics is not logic, but we all believed that when we managed to get people to stop smoking, our king said when he stopped smoking that he, it was disappointedly easy to stop smoking. And the whole people, <laughs> hope Norwegian population stopped smoking. But uh, we believe that why shouldn't the same action be possible to influence uh, uh, on, on drug addicts? Why shouldn't we be able to tell the people how dangerous this is and stop it? That was impossible to uh, convince uh, those who are responsible for such actions and who were responsible when it came to the, the nicotine, the smoking. Uh, and that meant that we were sitting there with all sort of expertise, no concrete new suggestion of preventive action. That has um, disturbed me. And now comes the reason why I sh share it with you. Uh, I, I have wondered, uh, at least in my country, and I, my suspicion is that this applies to most, at least most countries in Northern Europe, uh, the young people uh, study, go to school and study much longer than before. And it means that they probably, and, and they end the studies uh, being 26 years old, 27 years old. They marry later than before, at the end of their 20s, and they get children in in beginning of their 30s. Does that mean that we are actually educating the new generations, not to have a feeling of responsibility even for themselves? Uh, is it um, lack of responsibility for their own life and responsibilities that uh, so many, relatively speaking, are uh, going to the drugs? I don't know, 
But if I have asked some of the research people to look into this, if, if this could be one reason why there is, uh, uh, I, I wouldn't say increasing number of drug addicts, but at least it, the stability is on a very high level. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you.